Come on in quickly. She hasn't started yet. Um, hello, my name is Grace. And I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have social media accounts of some kind on your phone or on, on your computer. Um, in 2016, there was a study shown that 78% of Americans had social media profiles. And worldwide, that reached 1.96 billion. And that's expected to reach 2.5. 5 billion by 2018. So my main claim is that social media has a negative effect on society. It negatively affects society in many different ways. So my first point is that it negatively affects it by impacting body image. It also impacts, it also can cause addiction and even depression. So my, going back to my first claim, it increases insecurity. So a health reporter, Philippa Roxby, who is a health reporter for BBC News, did an article that and wrote that an inquiry by the all-party parliamentary group on body image heard evidence that girls as young as five were experiencing, you know, worries about their size or and their appearance. And that is just show like five and under, but there's also many teenagers that are experiencing that. And also adults. She found that 60% of adults also felt ashamed by the way they look. So that takes us back, takes us to where, how it increases social norms. She also talks about how the MP's report said that pressure to look good had pushed the cosmetic surgery rate up 20% since 2008. So people are seeing these public figures on social media posting how they look, but they don't, you know, they probably had cosmetic surgery of some kind. So people feel like they need to be like them, and it increases the society's view on like a fake society. So it also can cause addiction. So in a CBS News article, they discussed the negative effects of social media on social life. And according to the study posted on National Institute of Health website, internet, internet addic addiction disorder ruins lives causing neurological complications, psychological disturbances, and social problems. So I think we can all like agree that we've been like checking our phones during class or even at work or you know just doing anything, you feel like you constantly have to check to see who's tweeting what, who's posting what, or like you sometimes feel like you need to post something throughout the day. So it kind of takes away from your normal everyday lifestyle. Um, psychologi uh, psychologists at the University of Albany found that not only social media itself potentially is addictive, but it also has a it also could have a higher risk of impulse control issues such as substance abuse. So my next claim is that. It increases cyberbullying, which can cause, is linked to depression. So I, we all know about cyberbullying, I bet. In a Huffington Post article, Michelle Hamm, who is a researcher in pediatrics at the University of Alberta, did a study that followed teenagers over a course of time. And she found that cyberbullying preceded the teen's depression. So if a teen experienced cyberbullying, it was like, they were more likely to experience depression later on in life. And she also found that the more they were cyberbullied, the more likely their, um, the more symptoms they had of depression, which often lead to self-harm. So uh, social media doesn't just have a negative effect on the things we basically, like we think of, such as body image. It also affects, you know, addiction. And um, it increases social norms and uh, can even cause depression. All right, you had some good statistics to start off the speech and show why it's important and that's a part of the process that most of us are going to be engaged in. Uh, I thought that was fine. Your proposition's clearly identified. There's a preview. It sounds like there are only two supporting points, but in the body of the speech, it actually sounds like there are three or four supporting points, and so that was a little bit confusing. A couple of things came up that I think uh, probably are supposed to fit under one category, but they... Um, you know, they actually feel like they are separate categories, so I'm not exactly sure why that happened. Uh, in the body of the speech, I thought that you didn't do much in the way of signposting on these points. In fact, uh, the transition between um, the, uh, you know, the 
the body image issues and the addiction is no, almost non-existent. I mean, we would just start in on that second point without much uh, ending of the first point. I did see uh, some evidence in the presentation, but all, most of the evidence didn't seem to be associated with social media. You mentioned uh, the body image thing and the kids as young as five are doing this. I'm wondering what social media the kids at five years old are seeing that's causing this. That seems to me like uh, there's just an assumption that social media is the cause of that. Uh, there is a slight reference to maybe some people having problems because they're doing social comparison to pictures of celebrities uh, online. and But that's all asserted on your part. I don't have any data that talks specifically about social media. Body image issues have been around since well, forever, and of course, uh, you know, the mass media probably has an influence on it substantially, but um, separating out social media and attributing causality there, I think, is underdeveloped in your argument. Uh, the notion of addiction, I think you could use a little bit more data on this particular point. It's true that people do spend a lot of time on this, but you have a description of what <coughs> addiction is, and you say it ruins life, but we don't know. Well, does, does it mean I'm addicted if I look at my cell phone three times an hour? Is that, is that an addiction? Is that enough to classify me that? I think I heard someplace, like a statistic, where are you? You're, you're right there somewhere. I think I heard a statistic like yesterday or today, maybe it was on a podcast, which by the way is another example of social media, uh, <laughs> that the average person looks at their cell phone like 152 times a day. It came out to something like every six minutes. And I'm going, holy criminy, that's a lot of damn phone use. And I can see that that's definitely problematic. If that's what the average person is doing, that's a lot of issues, a lot of distractions that are going on. You need some information like that to show that this kind of problem is going on. And even if somebody isn't classified as addicted, that their obsessiveness with it is potentially problematic. Oh, I, it was on a podcast. You guys know what fubbing is? Uh, okay, fubbing. Well, I want it, it's not sexual. No. So don't, it's not dirty, but it, it's about this very kind of thing and how it could be destructive to relationships and I think that that would have been something where there's a place where there's a lot of information available that I think would make your argument a little bit stronger. The cyberbullying thing seemed to come out of nowhere. That's one of those things that wasn't in the preview. Uh, there's a lot of material on cyberbullying. It just isn't developed in this particular speech so I think you've missed an opportunity to make an argument there and that's a little problematic. All right, like I said, I'm kind of